There are four uh, sorting algorithms that I'm going to be working through for this course. Uh, bubble sort, uh, quick sort, shell sort, and shuttle sort. Okay, um, and the first that I'm going to look at is bubble sort. The sorting algorithms, effectively, what they are designed to do is to sort an unordered list of numbers or letters into correct order, ascending, descending, alphabetical, um, not uh, and counter -al alphabetical, or whatever you want to call that. Um, and obviously, a lot of a lot of students then say, "Well, what's the point of that? If I'm given five numbers, um, I can already put them in order." Well. I would hope so, is my answer to that. Um, but the question remains as to if you had a million numbers, um, could you put those in order? And by hand, it would seem like a completely pointless task and one that would take a long time. So you would program a computer to do it. And so what we're learning are algorithms that a computer can be taught how to do. And some of these algorithms, that, that's why there are four in, on this particular course, there are more than four types of sorting algorithm. Um, that's why we learn them, because ultimately um, what we're looking at is how expensive they are. Expensive time-wise. Some are faster than others. Bubble sort, as we're about to look at, is one of the slower of the uh, of the algorithms, one of the slowest there is. Um, so I'm going to show you how we set it out. Uh, I set it out in a particular way. So the way that I'm going to set it out is in a vertical or in vertical columns. Okay, so we've got a vertical column three, seven, one, five, two. We're going to put them into ascending order, and at each pass, so that's each line as we go, we are going to count the number of comparisons and swaps that we make. Now the reason for this is because we want to be able to have some way of comparing the algorithms and how quick they are and how good they are. The fewer number of comparisons and swaps, the better the algorithm. Because the more comparisons, the more thinking time the computer has to put in. Okay? So, what, how this works is that you first of all consider the 3 and the 7. Okay, and you're comparing these two. Now we're going to say that the computer can tell between two numbers which one is the larger and which one is smaller. Okay, so it knows that the three and the seven are in correct order. So it writes down the smaller of the two. Okay, and is now going to work with seven and one. Now we know that one is smaller than seven, so one must be swapped with seven. And in order to um, record the swap, I'm going to put in upper diagonal lines to show that one has been swapped and moved. We're now going to compare seven and five, because you can imagine that the seven's been swapped around, and we're now looking at seven and five. Okay? So seven and five, they're in the wrong order, so the five needs to be swapped. We're now looking at seven and two. Well, they're in the wrong order also, so the two must be swapped and the 7 must fall to the bottom. Okay, So you'll notice that the 7, the larger number, fell to the bottom of the list. And you'll notice that that happens every single time we do uh, a pass. The largest number in the list will drop to the bottom. Okay, So the number of comparisons that we made was 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So we made four comparisons. Notice how there were five numbers, four comparisons. And we made one, two, three swaps. Okay? Now, every time a number drops to the bottom, we can box it off. Okay? So what effectively we've done is that we can ignore any of the numbers that are boxed off because they have been dealt with. And the computer has an out in the algorithm, the computer knows this. So now we're looking at 3 and 1. Well, they're in the wrong order, so 1 must be swapped. Then 3 and 5, well, they're in the correct order, so we write down the small of the 2. 5 and 2, they need to be swapped, so the 2 must be swapped, and the 5 has dropped to the bottom. We must continue to write in the 7, and because 5 has drop to the bottom, we can now box it off. Okay? So now we count the number of comparisons of swaps we made. So we made one comparison, two comparisons, three comparisons. Four numbers, three comparisons. Okay? Can you see a pattern yet? And we made two swaps. Now we're looking at 1 and 3, so 1, okay, is the smaller of the 2, 3 and 2, they're in the wrong order, so a swap needs to be made, and then 3, okay, so the largest number of the 3 has dropped to the bottom, so we can box it off. There were 3 numbers, so we made 2 comparisons, and we made 1 swap. And finally, 1 and 2 need to be compared, okay, they're in the correct order. So once everything's in the correct order and there's been no swaps, we can box off the list. So we made one comparison, zero swaps, and we are done. Okay? And this is an example of using bubble sort. Okay? Um, in the next video, I will show you a second example.